Y'all see today, uh, my dad brought me to church today. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's how I got started here, is my mom and dad bringing me to church. So that's important to me. An important thing, that's, that's a prayer answer. Amen. And I want to look at, if you'll turn to Mark 10 here with me today, Mark chapter 10. I'm going to look at uh, Mark 10. We're going to start in verse 25. And I just want to look at this part first. Um, I'm just going to read this first. Um, and um, <clears throat> uh, I'll ask Brother Don to lead us in prayer once we get, get through the verse here. Uh, Mark 10 and verse 25. This is the word of the Lord, Jesus. He says, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God. With God all things are possible. Brother, would you lead us in prayer? Lord, we thank you for this scripture. We know it's the truth. We know it's your word. All things are possible. Even the lowest sinner, dear God. The greatest sinner that ever was. And be saved. Because you say it so. And we pray, dear Lord, that we can always look to you. That we can depend on you. Because we know, dear God, that you are true. And everything you say is true. <clears throat> and we pray, dear God, that the Holy Spirit will deal with us today. So Jason speaks your word. Lead us and guide us, God, and help us to do your will, we ask in the name of our Father, our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so Jesus is telling us here, there are things that are impossible. And there are things that we think are impossible. A lot of the things that were thought to be impossible and that people still think are impossible, they are not impossible. What they are is unstoppable. So I want to talk to you today about what the Bible says about the impossible and the unstoppable. If you'll turn with me to Luke chapter 23. This is out of our lesson today. Luke chapter 23 Look in verse uh, 35 here. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. Save thyself, they said. The soldiers mocked him. The people mocked him. They said, It's impossible. For you to save yourself. It's impossible for you to, your death to have any meaning here. For you to do anything to save yourself. For you to do anything to save anybody else. They said it's impossible here. And they mocked it. They mocked the very idea. They said it's impossible. But we know, because we read what happened, that the death of Jesus was his choice. He laid down his life. And the things that he was going to bring about because of that sacrifice are unstoppable. Not impossible. Unstoppable. And if we go on reading and you look in a verse 47, this was also from our lesson today, when the centurion saw what was done, he glorified God, saying, certainly this was a righteous man. Even this centurion sees it. Not impossible. It's unstoppable. He glorified God. And all the people, if you look in 48, that came together to that site, beholding the things which were done, smote their breasts and returned. They were amazed. They smote their breasts. They were so amazed at what had happened. That which they thought was impossible happened. It happened. And this, is, this was from the rending of the temple that we talked about uh, in the lesson also today. That That's what caused all this to come about. They, it was unstoppable. It was a impossible for them to deny 
what had happened that day. It was no longer possible for them to deny it, what was done. They couldn't do anything but glorify God, Amen. smite their breasts, and be amazed. It was unstoppable. And these were all, now remember, these are all the people that had mocked him. These were the soldiers who had struck him and beat him. These are the soldiers who had given him vinegar to drink, who had said, it's impossible for you to do anything. If they found out, the power of Christ is unstoppable, an unstoppable power. And if we look, through, uh, keep reading, look in uh, Matthew, where we have another uh, version of this story. Uh, look in Matthew 27. Look in Matthew 27 and verse 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. And this were, the, this were these that had said earlier on in verse 49, let, let be, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And they said to Jesus, it's impossible that you are the Son of Man. It's impossible that you're the Messiah. It's impossible. But then here we have in this verse the centurions that were with him watching the earthquake, everything that happens, the graves yielding up the dead. Life is exploding up out of the earth. You can't stop life coming up out of the earth. And the people say, the centurions say, it's, it's, it's unstoppable. We can't deny it anymore. There's no way for us to say it's impossible because it's happening. It's happening. Then they see it firsthand. It's happening. And it's in verses, verse uh, 52 that, that you see this. Uh, the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And that's when the centurions that were with him says, saw the earthquake. There was an earthquake, right? There was an earthquake. Saw the things that were done. They saw people coming out of the tombs. And what was their response? Well, the response of, of the denier, when they are first uh, um, presented with this evidence, fear. It's fear. They feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. And people were there also who witnessed this and, and had mocked Jesus and saw this was the Son of God. It's unstoppable. It's inevitable. It's not impossible. And we look back to that first verse in Mark 10, 25, what Jesus said. For a man to die on the cross and live again, for man it is impossible. For God, it is unstoppable. If you have Jesus Christ and you are forgiven because you have accepted him, with God it is unstoppable. You will rise again. Nothing is going to stop you from rising from the grave in that day. It's unstoppable. With man, it's impossible. With God, it is unstoppable. And that's what we celebrate, isn't it? That's what we celebrate. If you look in uh, Matthew 27 and look in uh, 62, just go a little bit further there, we see here that there is a, an attempt to seal Jesus up in the tomb. It's impossible for a man to roll this stone away and get himself out. It's impossible for these, these disciples to roll this big rock away and steal him out of there. That's what they're saying. Look in 62. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. They put a big stone there. No telling how many of them it took to put that there. And they put guards there, and they said, Now it's impossible. For him to rise again. It's impossible for him to come out of the tomb. They said it's impossible. 
It's impossible, they said. They thought they had it. But we can keep reading and see. Look at Matthew 28 and 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. So this angel comes down. And we, we have this understanding. You know what? This angel didn't come down and save Jesus out of the tomb. This angel, on command, came and rolled the stone away. On command, came and rolled the stone away. Now, now, what man can command an angel? There's no such, no such person. Not on this side. It's impossible for a man to command an angel to come and free him, to come and roll the stone away. But for God, for the man who is God in the flesh, it's unstoppable. Man who is God in the flesh, that stone, it, it, uh, it was a waste of time for him. They wasted a lot of time and manpower. They paid these guards uh, you know, wages, that was a waste of money. Because look what the guards did. Did the guards attack the angel and try to stop him? Did the guards pull their sword even? No, they fell over as if they were dead. They turned white and they, they fell over backward. So all of these Pharisees, these priests and Pilate, all these people who said it's impossible for them to get, get him out now, we got him, it's impossible. They found out it's unstoppable. He's unstoppable. You cannot stop Jesus Christ. You cannot stop that holy power. You cannot keep him in the tomb because the tomb does not win. The grave does not win. Right. He wins over the grave. He has won over the grave today. Amen. He has won over the tomb today. He has won over death today. Amen. If we read on, go on to 28 and 16 in Matthew. Sorry, it's, um, yeah, 16. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me into heaven and earth. So there he is. There he is. And it says that some, some doubted. Maybe they said, hey, wasn't it impossible for you to get out of there? Didn't they put a stone there? Didn't they put guards there? Didn't they seal it up? Didn't they make it impossible to get out? They had forgotten what he said to them before. With God, all things are possible. With God, it's inevitable. With God, it is unstoppable. Stone can't stop it. Guard can't stop it. The devil can't stop it. It happened. It was real, and they see that when they see Jesus free from the tomb, when they see the stone rolled away, when they see the bandages laying there and no body, they see it, they witness it. And if we look in um, 28.11 there, this is what happens before. This is before... Um, they, know they, they have admitted to themselves what happened. This is after the women come, and they, they see everything that happened. And um, look at, uh, let's go back to 9 here. As they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail, and they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Right. So when we see, if we, if we go into uh, 11 here, we say, when, Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came to the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. So it's been shown now to the, these chief priests. You thought it was impossible, but it's inevitable. It's unstoppable. It's been done. You can't deny it. To this day, you can't deny what has happened. Right? And we are told in 12 and 13 here, And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken into counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole them away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. And it is said among Jews to this day. 
they came and stole him away. And nobody thought to say to him, wait, wait, didn't you say it was impossible? Didn't you put a big stone there and a big guards? What happened to your stone and your guards? Well, they're lying. It's a lie. And they're paying money for people to lie about it. And the goal of doing all of this, we're going to make it impossible for these people to start a church. We're going to make it impossible for this Jesus to, to rise up again and to start saving souls the way that he talked about, to fulfill the prophecies that he talked about, to do the things that he said he was going to do, and to send back to the Father. They said, we're going to make it impossible. There will be no church. We're going to make it impossible. But you know what? We're here today, aren't we? Amen. It was unstoppable. It is unstoppable. They couldn't stop it. Not their money, not their authority, not their guards, not their stones. They couldn't stop it. He returned. Now, if you, we can turn to um, Luke 24 again and see, Jesus returns. Look at Luke 24 and uh, just in ver uh, verse 1 there. <clears throat> I'll get there. All right. Again, we have the ladies coming to the sepulcher. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. So here they are. These, these angels are say, saying to them, You didn't listen. You listened to the other side that said it's impossible. It was unstoppable. He's gone. He's risen already. And you know what? It didn't take him, it didn't take him uh, longer to, to rise again than it did for you to put your spices in the box. It didn't take long. It took exactly how long he said, didn't it? Exactly how long he said. It, it took that, exactly that long. If you look in verse 16 there, Jesus appears to some of the disciples. He walks with them. And he talks with them. And uh, they report back, and if you look in um, <clears throat> verse 25, he finally reveals himself to them. He says, O fools and slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village whither they went. He made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass as he sat and meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. Is this, is this the power of man? This is the power of God. A man cannot vanish out of your sight. And you know what? A man cannot expound the way that Jesus Christ can, the way that God can, the prophecies of God. And he gave it to them there. <laughs> gave it to him. He was unstoppable. He was returning in his power just as he is now. And we look in 2411. This is not something that the women were believed about. You look in 2411, it says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulcher, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in himself at that which was come to pass. So these women who came and said, we saw the tomb, the stone was rolled away. They, he was not there. They said, that's impossible. Even these disciples said, that's impossible. You have, you're, you're crazy. You're, you're telling tales. You're lying. They had to go see for themselves, didn't they? They had to see for themselves. If you look in 15, it came to pass while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. So Jesus does come back. He does appear to them. Right? And if you look in 32 of that, of that chapter, and they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? 
And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. They finally came to believe that it was unstoppable. 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 And if you look in 36, they just, as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. There he is. The tomb couldn't stop him. The guards couldn't stop him. It's unstoppable. And you know what? Even here today, the power of Jesus Christ is unstoppable. Right. Unstoppable. And you know what? We, go, we probably go about our days um, saying a lot of times, well, this seems impossible to me. Let me tell you, it's not impossible. If you do it for God, He will make it possible. Right, And all the hard things that you think are going to stop you from speaking the word of God, from doing the will of God, you think this is impossible. You know, building buildings, <laughs> but laying down foundations, people are going to say to you, that's impossible. But God will say, if you do it for me, it's going to be unstoppable. Amen. And people will throw things in your way, it's going to be unstoppable. And you're going to think to yourself, Coming to the altar seems like the hardest thing ever if you haven't been there. It's going to seem impossible. But let me tell you, if you're here today and you need to come to the altar, just like a brother said during the Sunday school, just step one step out. God will take that impossible and he will make you unstoppable. Unstoppable. And you will live Forever in Jesus Christ, you will be unstoppable. All of those who accept Jesus Christ, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. And this is not by the power of man. The power of man gets you nowhere, because man is going away. I don't know if you've read this in the Bible. Man is going away. Only the things of God remain. With man, it is impossible. With God, it is unstoppable. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you for the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection, that we can believe on him and be saved. And we ask, Father, that if there be anyone here today who is in the sound of my voice and needs to make a decision, I pray, Father, that they will, they will rise up and, and feel your unstoppable power. And we ask, Father, today that you will be with us as we depart, be with us as we go on home. Let us carry with you what we have learned today, what we have taught today, and what we have read today in the Scriptures. And we ask, Father, that you will just bless everyone that's been here those who could not be with us, lift them up, give them strength, healing, encouragement, whatever is needed. They might come and worship with us again. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.